Chapter Twenty of the Cat of Bubastes: A Tale of Ancient Egypt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Cat of Bubastes by G. A. Henty. Chapter Twenty: The King of the Rebu. The offer that Amuba had made through Jethro was a politic one, and he was influenced by two motives in granting a delay of twenty-four hours before receiving the answer. In the first place he felt sure that his own force would before the conclusion of that time be trebled in strength and that should the egyptians refuse he would be able to repel any efforts they might make to cut their way out until he would be at the head of such a force that he could at will either storm their positions or as he intended beleaguer them until starvation forced them to surrender in the second place he thought that the egyptian answer if given at once would probably be a refusal but the time for reflection would enable them to look their position in the face and to recognize its hopelessness on the one side would be certain defeat and death on the other their general would lead out his command intact and without dishonor although he had threatened to put the garrison to the sword in case they refused amuba had no intention to carry out his threat but on the contrary had determined that even were the egyptians forced to surrender by famine he would freely grant them the same terms he now offered he knew the proud and haughty nature of the egyptians and that the news of the massacre of a great garrison and the successful rising of a tributary province would excite such deep feeling that sooner or later an army would be dispatched to avenge the disaster if however the garrison left the country with their arms and standards no disgrace would be inflicted upon the national arms and as a tribute however much reduced would still be paid they could still regard the rebu as under their domination the reduction of the tribute indeed would be an almost imperceptible item in the revenue of egypt leaving jethro in command of the beleaguering force amuba accompanied by chebron who had been at his side during the fighting and a small bodyguard went back into the town the news of his coming had already spread and the inhabitants who had remained in their houses in terror during the to them unaccountable tumult of the night had now poured out into the streets the great space in front of the palace being densely packed with people as amuba approached a deafening shout of welcome was raised the gates of the prisons had been thrown open and those arrested the previous day and many others of the principal captains of his father's army thronged round him and greeted him as their king with difficulty a way was cleared to the gate of the royal enclosure amuba after entering mounted the wall and addressed a few words to the people he told them that in defiance of all probability he had escaped from his captivity in egypt and had made his way back to his native land intent not so much on claiming his rightful position there as of freeing them from the power of their oppressors he promised them that he would always respect their rights and usages and should endeavor to follow in the footsteps of his father then he retired to the palace where he held a council with the captains and leading men in the city orders were at once issued for every man capable of bearing arms to provide himself with some kind of weapon and to assemble at noon in the great square lists were drawn up of all the officers of the late army still living in the town and when the gathering took place at noon these were appointed to form the men into companies to appoint sub-officers to see to the state of the arms and as far as possible to supply deficiencies a larger proportion than was expected of the three thousand men that assembled were found to be provided with weapons although nominally all arms had been surrendered to the egyptians great numbers of spear and arrow-heads swords and axes had been buried shafts had been hastily made for the spears and bows used for the purposes of the chase were now brought out to do service as fighting weapons many hundreds of spears and swords had been found in the stores at the palace and when these were served out most of the men had a weapon of some sort they were at once marched up to the egyptian enclosure those with bows and arrows were placed upon the walls the rest were massed near the gate in readiness to advance to the assistance of the band within should the egyptians make an attempt to cut their way out in point of numbers amuba's forces were now superior to those of the egyptians but he was well aware that the superior arms and discipline of the latter would enable them to make a successful sortie should they determine to do so 
the women of the town were ordered to set to work to grind the grain served out from the magazine in the palace and to bake bread both for the fighting men present and for those expected to arrive by noon the latter began to flock in the contingents from the towns arriving in regular order while the shepherds and villagers straggled in irregularly as the news reached them of the events of the previous night by evening fully ten thousand men had arrived and as the egyptians had remained quiet all day amuba had every hope that they had decided to accept the terms he offered and that there would be no occasion for further fighting the troops however remained under arms all night ready to repel an attack and in the morning amuba and jethro mounted together on to the terrace of the building from which the parley had taken place on the previous day a few minutes later the egyptian governor and a group of his officers appeared on the opposite house this is king amuba jethro said in a loud voice he is here to confirm the terms offered yesterday and to receive your answer we are ready the egyptian governor said to retire beyond your frontier carrying with us our arms standards and valuables it being understood that we make no surrender whatever but that we march out on equal terms holding as we do that we could if we chose cut our way out in spite of any resistance you may hold that belief amuba said and the egyptian was astonished at finding that the king as well as his general was capable of conversing in the egyptian tongue and indeed knowing and honoring the valor of the egyptian troops i admit it is possible that although with great loss you might make your way out but more than that you could not do you could not hold the country for you have a nation against you it is doubtful whether you could reach the frontier surely it is better then that you should leave with honor and without loss as to the tribute that you offer the egyptian commander said i have no power to agree to any diminution of the terms imposed by the king and if it be his will that an army invade your country to enforce the former terms i with the troops here must march as ordered without imputation of having behaved treacherously that is quite understood amuba said but i trust my lord that you having seen for yourself how poor is our country how utterly unable to continue to pay the tribute formerly demanded from us which has already impoverished us to the last degree will represent the same in your dispatches to the king and will use your good offices in obtaining his favorable consideration of our case i can promise you that the tribute shall be paid regularly i regard egypt as the greatest power in the world and i am most desirous to continue in friendly relations with it and i swear to you that it will be no fault of mine if any complaint reach you of trouble on our part amuba's speech was well calculated to soothe the pride of the egyptian the latter was perfectly conscious although he spoke confidently that it would be no easy matter for his troops to cut their way through the narrow gateway held by the masses of the rebu still less to make their way harassed as he was to their frontier if he returned with his troops intact and in good condition he could so represent circumstances that no blame or discredit would fall upon him and personally he was exceedingly pleased at the prospect of the termination of his soldiering at a post so far removed from egypt and civilization he therefore agreed to the terms amuba proposed and after a short parley the conditions of the evacuation of the town by the egyptians were arranged amuba agreed to withdraw his men from the buildings that they occupied and also from the gate and to place them all upon the walls thus saving the egyptians the humiliation of passing through lines of armed men and avoiding the risk of a broil arising between the soldiers he at once issued the necessary orders and the rebu retired to the walls where they could defend themselves in case of any treachery on the part of the egyptians and the inhabitants of the city were all ordered back from the road leading from the entrance to the egyptian enclosure to the gate in the city walls an hour later the egyptians drew up in order in their enclosure each man carried with him food sufficient for a week's subsistence and amuba had arranged that a certain number of bullocks should be sent forward at once to each halting place on the way to the frontier and that there a herd sufficient for their subsistence during their march to the nearest egyptian garrison should be awaiting them in firm and steady order the egyptians marched out 
the images and symbols of the gods were carried aloft and the bearing of the soldiers was proud and defiant for they too were doubtful whether the rebu might not intend to make an attack upon them the terms granted them seeming to be almost too good to be trusted no sooner had the rear of the column passed out through the city gate than the rebu with shouts of joy flocked down from the walls and the city gave itself up to rejoicing jethro had at once sent out messengers to see that the oxen were collected at the points agreed upon and to issue orders that the population along the line of march should all retire before the arrival of the egyptians who might otherwise have been tempted to seize them and carry them off as slaves with them in their retreat for the next few days amuba's time was wholly occupied in receiving deputations from the various towns and districts in appointing fresh officials and in taking measures for the rearming of the people and their enrollment in companies so that the country should be in a position to offer a desperate resistance should the egyptians determine to recapture it it was certain that many months must elapse before any force capable of undertaking their invasion could march from egypt but amuba was determined that no time should be lost in making preparations and he decided that something of the tactics and discipline of the egyptians should be introduced into the rebu army he had on the very night of the surprise of the town sent on a message to inform the girls of his success and that neither chebron nor himself was hurt having by unremitting work got through his most pressing business he left jethro who was now formally appointed general-in-chief to carry on the work and started with chebron to fetch the girls to his capital but he was now obliged to travel with a certain amount of state and he was accompanied by twenty of the leading men of the rebu in chariots and by an escort of light-armed horsemen at each town through which he passed he was received with rapturous greetings and hailed as king and deliverer of the nation two days after starting he arrived at the little seaport and after receiving the usual greeting from the inhabitants and holding an audience at which he received the principal inhabitants who came to tender their allegiance he made his way to the house of the persian merchant where he had placed the girls as his chariot stopped at the door the merchant appeared on the threshold and made a profound prostration he had until the arrival of amuba at the town been in entire ignorance that those who had placed the girls under his charge were other than they seemed he knew indeed from their ignorance of his language that the girls were not persians but supposed that they were female slaves who had been brought from a distance with a view perhaps of being presented as an offering to the king after a word or two with him amuba and chebron entered the house and ascended to the apartment which had been set aside for the girls they were standing timidly at one end of the room and both bent profoundly as he entered amuba for a moment paused in astonishment and then burst into a fit of laughter is this your sister chebron who thus greets her old friend in such respectful fashion am i myself or some one else you are king amuba Miza said half smiling but with tears in her eyes that is true enough Miza. but i was always prince you know so there is nothing very surprising in that there is a great difference Miza said and it is only right where there is such a difference of rank the difference of rank need not exist long Miza. amuba said stepping forward and taking her hand chebron who is your brother and like a brother to me has given me his consent and it rests only with you whether you will be queen of the rebu and amuba's wife you know that if i had not succeeded in winning a throne i should have asked you to share my lot as an exile and i think you would have said yes surely you are not going to spoil my triumph now by saying no if you do i shall use my royal power in earnest and take you whether you will or not but Miza did not say no, and six weeks later there was a royal wedding in the capital. Amuba had at once allotted one of the largest houses in the royal enclosure to Chebron, and to this he took Miza while Amuba was making the tour of his country, receiving the homage of the people, hearing complaints, and seeing that the work of preparation for the defense of the country was being carried on, after which he returned to the capital the wedding was celebrated in great state though it was observed that the religious ceremonies were somewhat cut short and that amuba abstained from himself offering sacrifice on the altars of the gods the ceremony was a double one for at the same time chebron was united to ruth for the next year the preparations for war went on vigorously and the rebu army was got into a state of great efficiency 
amuba and jethro felt confident that it could successfully withstand any invading force from egypt but as they had hoped egypt made no effort to regain her distant conquest but was content to rank the land of the rebu among the list of her tributary nations and to accept the diminished tribute once prepared for war amuba turned his attention to the internal affairs of the country many of the methods of government of egypt were introduced irrigation was carried out on a large scale and the people were taught no longer to depend solely upon their flocks and herds stone took the place of mud in the buildings of the towns rigorous justice was enforced throughout the land wagons and carts similar to those of egypt took the place of pack animals which had hitherto been used for transport improved methods of agriculture were taught and contentment and plenty reigned in the land chebron remained amuba's chief minister adviser and friend and under their joint efforts the rebu rose from the condition of a mere settled tribe to that of a small but flourishing nation another change was made but more slowly soon after his ascension amuba assembled many of the leading men and chief priests in the country and explained to them the convictions held by himself and chebron and their wives that there was but one god who ruled over the world and that this knowledge was the highest wisdom of the egyptians he explained to the priests that he did not wish to overthrow the temples or disturb the worship of the former gods but that he desired that the people should not remain in ignorance but should be taught that the gods as they worshipped them were but symbols or images of the one great god he said he had no thought of enforcing his convictions upon others but that all would be free to worship as they pleased and that at all times he and chebron would be ready to confer with those who wished to inquire into these matters in this matter alone amuba met with much opposition in carrying out his plans and had he been less popular than he was with the people his efforts might have cost him his throne and his life but the rebu were devoted to him and as the priests came gradually to see that the change would not diminish their power their opposition died away especially as many of the younger men were soon convinced by the arguments of the king and his minister and preached the new religion with enthusiasm among the people but it was not until many years after that amuba had the satisfaction of knowing that the one god was worshipped among his people he was well aware that the success of the work was to no small extent due to the earnestness with which misa and ruth had labored among the wives and daughters of the nobles how strangely things turn out chebron said one day ten years after their arrival in the land when the little party who had travelled so long together were gathered in a room in the palace at one time it seemed that that unlucky shot of mine would not only bring ruin on all connected with me but be a source of unhappiness to me to the end of my life now i see that except for the death of my father it was the most fortunate event of my life but for that i should all my life have gone on believing in the gods of egypt but for that although you amuba and jethro might some day have made your escape misa and i would assuredly never have left egypt never have known anything of the life of happiness and usefulness that we now enjoy all this i consider i owe to the fortunate shot that killed the cat of bubastes End of chapter 20 End of the Cat of Bubastes, A Tale of Ancient Egypt, by G. A. Henty